cases for and against continuing the INF Treaty and New START, which both are fading fast? Well, um, in the case of INF, I suppose the argument would be, gee, we're not likely to do very much in Europe anyway. Um, why can't we continue it to build our relations, which are pretty strained with the Russians? I think that roughly is the argument for start, you know, extending it. I think the, the arguments against this, um, in the case of INF, is that we've all but pulled the plug, so uh, you really you have to have an argument for why you're going to reverse course now. And perhaps you could argue, oh, well, we're going to reverse course because we're going to modify it, and we're going to sit down and modify it, and so we can leave it in place and then modify it. But then you have to have clarity on what you want. Um, there are a couple of things that you want to do. And I think the Russians and um, the U.S. have articulated the desire to get China involved. This is not new. So you try that. Good luck. I mean, that might be a hard sell. You might have to start deploying INF missiles near them to get their attention enough to want to give up what is a massive number of INF missiles they have. So that would be you know, one desirable thing. I think the other thing is um, INF does not cover hypersonics because hypersonic missiles are neither ballistic nor air, air uh, um, what would you call it, air, um, they, they do not over their entire f flight 50% of their flight pattern is, is uh, not ballistic, and uh, it's not simply um, something with, with wings and, a, and an engine either. So uh, it's not covered. It's not covered in New START either. These things, like winter, are coming. And um, it'd be nice to start talking about how you want to control those if you knew it all as far as numbers or whatever, range, whatever. Um, maybe you don't, but you, you need to talk about it. Uh, there are um, certainly the whole question of missile, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, nuclear weapons that are not strategic is a big issue for lots of folks. Um, the Russians have maybe, you know, there's certainly more than a thousand of these, maybe several thousand, depending on who you listen to. So we have maybe 100 or 200 deployed. So there's a big difference there. Do you want to talk about those? Uh, all of these things come up for consideration uh, if you open up negotiation. Now, that question is, is can you hold on to these agreements and get momentum to get those negotiations better that way than clearing the decks? Lots of dispute, you know, an expert opinion you know, that you might respect could go either way on that.